Today I'd like to take you on a virtual mountain hike with me. What is it like when you come into the mountains with me and you want to be coached around reigniting your vision? We're going to go into the mountains for a minimum of three days and preferably five days. Why a minimum of three days? Because you need at least two days to truly, truly disconnect from everything that you think is important, from everything that is causing you stress, from all the problems that you have been facing back home, at the office or in regular life, from all that, all the messages and all the email, everything. And simply from your to-do list. Now as we start out, you pick up your backpack and you come to the conclusion that that thing is bloody heavy. You put it on and we start walking. Usually the first bit is quite easy and what I found is that people, you will probably do this too, start out at a pace that they're used to and that is city pace. That is the pace that we all have when we work and live in a city. Look around you when you're in that inner city, especially a big city that has a lot of tourists and you can see the difference. Those that work there, that live there, have a tendency to almost speed walk from one meeting to the next, to catch the tube, to catch the bus, whatever. While the tourists are walking around at a leisurely pace, which is a pace that the locals hardly ever use. So when you start out, that is usually the pace that people start out at. And sometimes they don't even notice that I start lagging behind a little bit. Because over time, I've learned that city pace is not the right pace to uh, use when you're hiking up a mountain. When we then veer off the main trail and go onto the trail that will take us to our first mountain inn, I usually have to call people back and they start to really notice that I'm going a lot slower than they are. And that's when we start talking about city pace and mountain pace. And I teach you what mountain pace is, how you can find a pace that you can maintain for a long time. Because if you try to hike up the mountain at city pace, the mountain will simply win. You will not be able to reach the, mount the mountain in or you will, but you will be exhausted by the time that you do. And we have another two or more days to hike after all. So I teach you to go at a pace that you can maintain for a long time. Now that is something that I still have to be conscious of because although I can often maintain it for a long time, whenever there is somebody else around that is faster than me, I have to consciously remind myself really, <coughs> excuse me, to go slow, to, to stay at my own pace and not try to match somebody else's. <clears throat> and I learned that the hard way and sometimes I learn that lesson again. I remember the first couple of times I went hiking, one of those times I was hiking with, or I was hiking by myself, but I saw somebody in front of me that was obviously older than I was and I would say at least 20 years old. Now I am a competitive person, I've always played sports at a competitive level, so I saw this person and I was like, I should be able to catch up with him and then to overtake him and get to the summit before he is there. So I sped up and I was going too fast already really. So I sped up, barely able to keep breathing, but I caught up to him and then I went oh, past him. And as I passed him, I said, Grüß Gott, wie geht's ihm? Hello, how are you? How are you doing? And we had a brief conversation and then I went on. Not long after that, I had to stop. I really had to stop because I had to catch my breath couple of minutes into me catching my breath this guy comes walking up nice and slow 
says to me, Grüß Gott, wie geht's dir denn? Hi there, how are you doing? And as I gasped, I was sort of okay. He said goodbye and uh, said, well, I'll be seeing you. And he did. He did see me at the summit where he had been waiting for something like 30 minutes for me. And I uh, had to admit that his tactic of going slow was probably better than mine of trying to go at a pace that wasn't working for me. So it took me a while. It took me uh, actually quite a long time to find a pace that worked for me. If I'm looking away every now and again, that's because there's horses around here. Let me show you. Which is not an uncommon sight in the Austrian Alps. Horses or cows in the meadow. Uh, but I'm not always, I'm not very comfortable with horses. So I'm trying to learn, but um, it's a process. Anyways pace that's the important bit as we move up into the mountains you start discarding some of the things that you carry in your backpack the problems that you had to deal with just before you came here came to the mountain to to me to go into nature all the emails and the uh, other things that you still were in your inbox or somewhere else on your hard drive that you had to pay attention to you literally start disconnecting you leave those things by the side of the trail and as you do your backpack gets a little bit lighter it helps that you're literally disconnected because in the mountains and in lots of other places in nature there usually is no connection to the internet there's not, e not even cell service so as we move through the first day as we hike up and stop every now and again to take in the views and notice that we constantly get different perspectives on the valley below and on the on the surroundings as we sit by a mountain brook maybe even putting our feet in because we want to give them um, some relief we start also noticing the smaller things that are around us we as we move slower than we do in usual life we see the bugs on the on the ground below us we see the small flowers that come up in cracks in places where you wouldn't think that flowers could even grow you start noticing wildlife that every now and again uh, pops up not as often as I would like, by the way, but yeah, it is there. And that's how we reach the first mountain in. The second day, still about settling in and further releasing whatever it is that you brought with you and that you have to let go of so that you can start focusing on all, all the things that are truly important. And on that second day, things are going to start dropping in you start noticing that inspiration is slowly starting to flow again. New ideas may be dropping in. You get fresh perspectives on things that are truly important and perhaps even the problems that you left behind by the trail side but still need, are important for the vision, for your vision. By day three, by the end of day two, by the um, start of day three, what has happened is that that part of your brain, which is called the working part of your brain, where all those problems were stored, has been reset. It's almost like uh, part of your hard drive has been wiped clean and all of a sudden you have space again for all those fresh ideas that need to be coming in. And that's why we do at least three days and preferably even five days. That's why it's on day three, four, five that we start paying real attention to which elements of your vision need the most attention. Why is it that you were stuck in the doing? 
we stop every now and again so that you can take in not just your surroundings but also those things that are important why like i said why were you stuck in a dune are you doing the things that are important and are you delegating the things that you shouldn't be doing is your vision still supported by the core values that you are living by and working by or do you perhaps need to change your values a little bit give them a different priority a different order cows are joining us now as well or do you need to adjust the, the, the trail or the path that you're taking towards your vision. That's also a possibility. All these things start dropping in. Just like the new fresh ideas, the, the fresh perspectives, ideas on how to further grow your vision, whether it is for life, for business or both. And it's important not just to stop every now and again in the mountains and take in your surroundings, to want to not only wander but also wander and take in the expensive views that like the ones be like the ones I'm looking at really something like this when you're let me turn it around all oops, all the way expensive views that give you a, a different perspective on nature, on life, but also a different perspective on your vision, on the way you are tr working your towards that vision. The final day, the final part of a hiking trek into nature, a coaching trek into nature is planning. Once you have clarity again around your vision around what is truly important to you and the path that you need to take there you can reverse engineer the most important steps how are you going to get from where you are now to where your vision is what is it that you need to do which of your values need to take priority which of your roles need to take priority and which action steps do you need to take to get from here to there and that's when we come down the mountain after three to five days of walking around in the most beautiful countryside where we've not just taken in the beauty of nature but also the beauty of your vision i hope this was helpful as always go there greatly oh almost forgot if you want to find out more go to daregreatlycoaching.com you will also find out about a workshop that I'll be doing on September 7th in London in Richmond Park and it's filled with deer it's beautiful it's the former hunting ground of um, Henry VIII and I'll post a little video that a friend of mine did of a herd of deer running through the park over there and um, on October 17th through the 20th I'll be coming to Cornwall to take a group of eight people to uh, together with Joe Courtney of Inner Synergy on a hike on a hike in nature a trek in nature in on the, the southwest coast path which is gorgeous countryside as well hope to see you at either one of those and like I said, you can find out more at daregreatlycoaching.com. As always, go there greatly. Bye-bye.